My name is Max Maven, and by profession I am an explorer of the aesthetics of mystery. Uh, more simply put, I'm a theatrical mind reader, and uh, I'm doing a show coming up on October 28th, my full evening show at the Cerritos Center for the Performing Arts. On uh, It'll be Friday, October 28th, and uh, I hope to see you there. I don't claim any, any psychic abilities, because I'm, to me the word psychic is one step removed from uh, aliens uh, secretly controlling the government or something. Um, I, I don't consider what I do to be supernatural. Uh, on the other hand, if I were to say to you everything I do is a magic trick in the sense of sleight of hand or, or mirrors or whatever else you associate with the term, that wouldn't be accurate either. Uh, I, I build upon psychological principles and a lot of experience with people, uh, and it's all theatrically embellished. Different people have different uh, uh, situations as far as whether or not I can work with them. I can usually work with just about anybody. It's a little bit tough when you're getting a, a drunk, for example, because they're not they're not organized, so they're not predictable. Uh, I've had situations where someone is really uh, is not drunk, but is but is contrary. You know, they don't want me to succeed, and and sometimes I can handle that by doing what I describe as a cushion shot. You know, in 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 billiards, in in pool, uh, you can't always get a direct line to where you want to go. So sometimes you bank it off one of the side cushions of the pool table and get there by sort of going around. So let's imagine that I'm sitting at dinner with you and I decide I want you uh, to choose something off the table and I've, uh, I've decided that the salt shaker is what I want you to choose. Maybe I wrote a prediction. And, and now I, I give you certain kind of psychological steering and uh, you wind up picking up the salt shaker, and, and the prediction is open, and everybody's amazed, and we have a good time. But let's say I, I, I peg you as being very contrary. Well, the solution, simplistically, the solution might be to start sending you the kind of psychological steering uh, to pick up the fork, so that you'll say, not necessarily consciously, but, but, but you will have the feeling, you know, he wants me to pick up the fork, so I'm going to pick up the salt shaker, because it isn't what he wants me to do. Well, I've gotten to the same desired result. In the show, I do uh, what we can loosely refer to as mind reading, uh, involving members of the audience uh, in ways that are mysterious, surprising, and fun. Uh, I also do the reverse. I do what I sometimes refer to as mind writing, where uh, I steer a person's behavior in ways that initially they may not realize they're being guided. Uh, but intermixed with that, I, I do monologues. I talk about various people and things, historical moments, uh, pretty diverse stuff, uh, all of which has some impact on me, things in some cases that I've been fascinated with since a very early age. Uh, and, and at first, I will tell you that people enjoy what, what I'm talking about, but they're not quite sure how it all fits together. Uh, because I'll talk about Japanese kabuki theater, the New York literary scene of the 1920s, um, Hungarian mathematicians. It's, it's a pretty uh, diverse set of topics, but as the show progresses, things that seem very far apart gradually fit together. And so by the end of the show, things that seemed almost arbitrary in the sense of their relationship uh, fit together in a way that suddenly makes sense. And that's uh, another example of, of how the show attempts, at least, uh, to, to make you look at things in a slightly different way. I was uh, uh, raised in a Jewish household. Uh, we were observant, but not uh, not overly so. I went to Hebrew school, I was bar mitzvahed. I started exploring the roots of what I do uh, when I was a little kid. 
as a profession, I have now been doing this as, as my, my full-time profession uh, approximately 36 years. We're going to do something involving these. These are little uh, leather purses. Uh, before we get to those, however, let me introduce a couple of other materials. A pen, that is for you. Uh, a little envelope, the, kind of a pay envelope. And inside the envelope is a picture of me. Uh, it's a business card that doesn't have an address. That's how, that's how mystery people communicate. Uh, I'm going to ask you to draw a picture. You're going to draw it on the blank side of the card. And I am going to turn away... Let me set one more thing on the table, and that is this, a roll of masking tape. Its reason will be obvious in a moment. Let me turn my head, and you don't show the camera, don't show, there are a couple of people here in the room, don't show them. You're going to be the only one who knows what this drawing is. So make your drawing, and then turn that card uh, so that your drawing is, is on the bottom, and the picture of me is on the top. You'll notice that it's on a slightly kind of laminated stock, which means you can't read up through the card. Uh, and for that matter, the portrait of me has a lot of black in it, so it would make it harder to read uh, through the card. So, in other words, you can't read through the card. <laughs> Tell me when you're finished and ready to continue. I'm finished. Okay. And I can turn around without seeing the picture? Yes. All right. We're going to put the picture away into the little envelope. Would you give me, I would say, five or six inches of the masking tape? And we will, that's, that's great, and you tear that off, and we will wrap it around the envelope so that there is no way to get in there without a lot of effort. Is that fair? So. Inside this envelope is your picture, and you are the only one who knows what it is. Is that a fair statement? It really is. Here's where the three purses come into play. I'm going to ask you, when I turn around again, I'm going to ask you to pick up any one of the purses, take your folded little envelope, put it inside that purse, and then shut the purse and put it back in the row. All right? I turn, right, turn around, you do that. Now, I might have some psychological uh, clue as to what purse you might pick. Uh, you know, some people are drawn to the center because of balance. Some go to the left or right, which could have a political implication or, or an aesthetic reason. But I think, uh, if you really think it over, the number of influences as to which purse you might pick are, are such that they sort of cancel each other out. So at this moment, if I were to turn around, uh, I wouldn't be able to guess which, which uh, purse you chose just on the basis of which position it was. Would you agree to that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I heard the little snap, so I'm, I'm assuming that means you, you actually did put the envelope inside the purse. Yes. Let's do this. Mix the purses up. Move them around. Switch them around uh, so that even you do not remember which purse contains the little envelope. And I hear, I hear the purses sliding, so that uh, lets me know that you're, you're doing what I asked. Tell me when you're ready to continue. I'm ready. All right. Now look. I haven't touched anything. I haven't seen anything. At this moment, do you know which purse contains your, your little envelope? No. No. So even if I had been standing looking over your shoulder, I wouldn't know which purse no. had that. And if you look at, the, at the, the bulk of the purse, because the envelope is small and flat, there's, there's no bulging to, to give it away. There really is no way of knowing without opening the purses. Well, that's not true. Uh, I'll tell you a very good way we could find out which purse contains the envelope without, uh, without opening the purses, all right? Because this is being recorded on, onto videotape. And if I could get uh, the opportunity to run that tape backwards, right, then I could track the movement of each of these purses as you mix them around, all right, and figure out by looking at the tape in reverse, I could figure out which purse 
got the envelope in the first place and where it ended up. Right? Uh, unfortunately, I don't think we can wrestle the cameraman into allowing us to do that. He looks pretty tough. But there's another way. Because you have your own tape right up here. You may not consciously remember exactly how you mixed the, uh, the, the purses around, but the information is there because it happened to you. You saw it. You physically did it. So if I can tap into that memory on your part, I should be able to kind of work backwards and figure out which of the verses has the, uh, the little envelope and which, which of the two that don't. All right? So let me see. Look right here. It may be painful, but look right here. <laughs> All right, so when you... Yeah, you favored the right end of the row. So when you did the switch, yeah... Okay. Then you do this sort of almost a, like a loop de loop with your with your switching. Um, that purse is empty. Yeah, but I do. Pick up the purse, open the purse, show show the interior to the camera. It feels empty. It's empty. Empty. See, if there was a live audience for this, they'd be applauding now, and I could tease them for the fact that they were literally applauding nothing. <laughs> but we, okay, one down, two to go. All right. Uh, and uh, you yourself do not know which of these purses, which of these remaining purses has your envelope and, and, and which does not. But if you think back to how you started, you know, because when you were, you were going to go for the middle, weren't you? You, you considered it to try and throw me off. I'm sorry, am I ruining That's all right. No. Okay. I'm just trying to get a sense of where you began and then how you mixed them. I'm not trying to throw you off. No, in fact, you've given me what I need to know. That's empty. Show it to the camera. Now look, Naomi. Uh, I have successfully determined which purse contains the little envelope with your drawing inside. But that kind of brings us to a, uh, a theatrical problem. Because at this moment, there's no ta-da moment, right? I mean, if I say, and so therefore open this purse, and you do, and inside is the little envelope, well, everybody expects that now because they know I'm... I, I... So let's take it a step further. Pick up the purse, I'm not going to touch it, and hold it between your hands. So at this moment, sealed between your hands, there is a leather purse. And that leather, opaque and, and thick, is hiding and containing an envelope. And that envelope, which is wrapped up with tape and, 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 and locked shut in a sense, uh, contains a, a business card on which there is a picture that you are the only person in the world who knows what that is. So now I have to try and work with that. Should I look at your nose again? Yeah, look at me, right here. Right there, okay. Uh, right between the eyes. Right between the eyes. Yeah. Oh, good. This is going to be a little easier than I thought. Some, <laughs> some people get really wild and, and, and... What do they do? Abstracts are the hardest thing for me. You know, it's, if someone is thinking of something, I can, I can get a handle on it, usually. But if someone just does a design with curlicues or whatever, then I can get really sidetracked. Because I'll, I'll be trying to see what the image is, and it doesn't have any meaning to them. But you did a picture of something. Yeah. Uh, now, this is interesting, because sometimes when people draw a picture, uh, they add mentally when they're reconstructing the picture they 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 even though they drew it in black and white they had color but you didn't do that you're 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 sticking with black and white oh and a pen hmm there's only a black pen right but a lot of people when they draw the black and white picture when they actually flesh it out because what they visualize is is more elaborate than what they actually drew so they'll, so they'll put in the color but but you didn't do that well you just did for a moment but but that was kind of my influence, my suggestion. So uh, we'll keep it the black and white. I have down here 
a big piece of card barn. And I also have a larger pen. I am going to draw what I hope is extremely similar to what you are thinking of. All right? Let's see how close I can get. Do I need to be thinking of it? Or? I, I'm pretty sure I've got it. Okay. So if you want to keep thinking about it, that's fine. But I'll think about it. I think, I think, uh, I think I've, I've got enough to work with. Okay. Boy, I hope, because this is being recorded. So if I'm completely off, I look like a chump, because you're, you're, you're going to be able to put this up on the web regardless. But uh, let me see. OK. I didn't do anything yet. I just thought I'd give you a <laughs> false expectation. <laughs> um. <laughs> Man, this could be the end of a career right here on camera, but we'll, we'll do the best we can do. Uh, separate your hands. In between the hands. Uh, the opaque little purse. Inside the purse, held shut by metal, inside the <laughs> purse is the, uh, the, the envelope, still hermetically sealed. <laughs> Let's uh, see if I can get this off. And tape. We did a very good job taping. We did too, good, too good a job of taping. There we go. All right. There's the business card, somewhat the worst for wear, but, but there it is. And, uh, okay, um, it's a triangle on top of, of, a, of a half circle. But I'm, I'm, but, but, but I'm going to, I'm going to, to guess that it, it, this is meant to be a boat, right? That it apparently is f a flying boat because the water is, is actually <laughs> underneath it. Uh, I, I was it's a, it's not a, a good artist. I, I'm teasing you. It's, a, it's, <laughs> it, it's very clear that it's a boat on the water, and you, you draw it quickly. But but what's interesting is that people draw boats differently. Someone who I mean, first of all, a boat is not the only thing you could have drawn. There are no restrictions. But a lot of people, if they draw a boat, they make a little steamship. That's that's pretty common. Uh, sometimes, if they do a sailboat, they put little stick figures, little people standing on on the boat. Uh, some people don't do you have actually three wiggly lines to indicate the water. Some people do more of a kind of a scallop shape. That the water almost looks pointy, but you went for this this kind of thing, and and and, uh, and and specifically three. And the wiggles indicate that it's in deep water. And, uh, and um, any reason why you chose to draw this? You don't own a sailboat. No. No, that was a statement, not a question. <laughs> Correct. Um, I just I just got an image of a of, of a of a boat. Okay. And I but it was just something you grabbed. I mean, I didn't right. in some way, you know. Perhaps you did. But but <laughs> at least as far as you remember, at no time did I say draw a sailboat. No, I never heard you say. I never heard you say that. Above, say above say. three wiggly lines. You never did. You never yeah. did. And I. Now you hold that so that the camera can see it, right? Because the idea is that when I turn mine around, we have a very exciting and dramatic pose for our finale. Okay. Ready? I'm ready. Here it is. Wow. Yours is better than mine, though. I've had more practice. <laughs> That's really amazing. I'm glad I got the wiggly lines. That was the part that I was... Uh, I was above the water. ...confused about. And, uh... Here we go. That's pretty cool. Well, thank you for thinking with me. Thank you.